Good morning, guys. So it's day two. I'm sucking on a Jolly Rancher. It's incredible. Uh, Jimbo's annoying, as usual. Okay, you're gonna tear up my bag. Calm down. And uh, my goal for today is to get definitely more food. Hopefully enough to fill both me and Jimbo up. So what I want to do is catch enough crawdads to use this bait down there to get a lighter weight, longer crane pull, and to get better at fishing with it. But the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go up there and I'm going to get a whole bunch of wood. Because yesterday's fire situation was just unnecessarily a pain in the butt. So I'm going to do that first. One quick tip I want to give you guys. When you're sleeping overnight like this, I suggest you take your knife and your axe or whatever else out of their sheath and let them lay out. Because if you have moisture in either sheath, it can... Uh, it can cause rust easily overnight. Um, I don't see, I don't use stainless stuff much. I don't see much of a purpose. If you just take a little bit of care of stuff, it's really not necessary and there's a lot of benefits to going with high carbon. So anyways, all of the good pine is up that hill a bit. Shouldn't be too hard to get to. So I'm going to take my hidden woodsman ruck up there and just get a whole bunch of wood and hopefully a nice cane pole. Take the hidden and the knife and the axe, of course. And uh, you can get ready to eat today. Stick around. So I was just getting my backpack ready, and I looked on the ground, and I saw a worm over here. And these are some pretty quick little worms. Not like the usual worms that I'm used to seeing. But, that is fish bait in my campsite. That's convenience, like fast food fish bait. Anyways, already this morning I haven't even gotten out of bed, and I've got three worms for fish. It's pretty dang cool. We gonna find some wood today. Jimbo's lucky he's got four-wheel drive. Alright. Back there is where I'm going to go. I might be able to get just about everything I want from this one dead tree. Just bring the whole thing down. The camp axe is a great and powerful tool for its size, but I think that its biggest downfall is that because of its size, people want to use it like a hatchet. It can be used by a hatchet, but it's definitely an axe, and it performs best when used like an axe. So you have to kind of get used to a two-handed grip, I think, to really get the full potential out of the axe. And once you do, it is a great little piece to store in the pack. I was hoping that I was going to be able to actually use 
the log section of this wood, but it's so rotten, which is weird to me because a lot of time, a lot of times in my experience, when the wood dies and it's still standing, it'll actually dry out and get really hard. And clearly, that was not the case here. This stuff is soggy like a sponge. So what I've been doing so far is just breaking down a bunch of this wood. Um, the big log here is just rotten crap. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of sections of that as well. And they'll be staying logs. And what that means is I'm going to keep them on the side of the fire to dry out a little bit. But when I need to go somewhere, get some fish, do whatever I've got to do, I'll put those on top of the fire and they'll keep all the coals under it fresh. So I come back and just roll off the log and uh, throw some tinder on there, blow on it, and boom, I have a fire back. So uh, that's what I'll be doing here with this guy. And then this is what I've got so far. I think I'll get some bigger, a little bit of wrist size stuff, a little more thumb size stuff just for keeping. But uh, as of right now, that's where I'm at. So here's what we got. When Malcolm sold me this pack, I think he knew that it wasn't going to stay clean and pristine for very long. That's alright, because I think that's what Malcolm wants. So now I'm going to get all this wood offloaded and organized, and uh, get ready to go do some fishing. As you saw in the day one video, the Dry Creek Forge custom knife here at 3 16ths of an inch thick is big enough to do some light chopping and definitely tanky enough to handle just about any amount of abuse. But the super high grind in the ADCR V2 steel holds an excellent fine edge. Ross makes a really thin edge. So the knife really, really excels at your small stuff. It's really a pleasure to use. Firewood piles ago, and we have a nice pile of fat wood here, along with uh, my very well used rod, and we've got a feather stick. So, once I uh, go get a fish, try and stay op optimistic about this. Once I go get a fish, I'll bring them back over here and cooking them up should be a pretty uh, short process. So, I keep saying that I'm going to go catch fish, and then you keep seeing footage of me not catching fish. Well, the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take all of these guys, or what's left of them, I'm going to build a fish funnel over at my fishing hole, go Jimbo, and uh, I'm going to let that sit because I might sit there unsuccessfully trying to catch fish for another few hours again, but have a fish funnel that brings one in. Or it might work the other way around. You never know. So I'm going to go do work. There's actually a lot of work making this fish funnel and so you need to make sure although the concept is simple and everything looks easy and it's pretty straightforward make sure that you allow yourself enough time using the fish funnel and make it good enough to get enough calories out of it to be worth putting the calories into it so there you have it I would have liked to make this in deeper water more out to the middle there, but uh, look at that, look at that fish right there. Can you see him? I, I would have liked to have made it in a little deeper water, but I had to do the best I could with what I have. Now I did just find this guy. No idea why he died. Uh, 
or how he got up here. Uh, but I think I'll use him as bait in one corner. He should stink and attract something. Looks like he got smashed. Can you see this? Here? Maybe I accidentally smashed him when I was doing something yesterday. Well, now I know how he floated up to the edge. Uh, dead fish float. Ish. That was a fail. Hopefully, these guys will not float or do something weird. Hopefully they will go right where I want them to go. Which is right here. What do you think? Oh yeah. They stink too. Like in a good way. They smell like seafood. Um, but uh, yeah, all the little fishes are automatically losing their minds. And look. Oh, he's a cool looking little fish. So hopefully this works. This should attract some attention. And in the meantime... Time for me to get to fishing. All of those bluegill, which aren't showing on my camera for some reason, there's about four of them sitting right where I'm looking. You can see just a faint glimmer of where they should be uh, to the human eye, but three or four of them there, maybe five, were all in my trap, which means that my opening is too large. So what I'm going to do, there's one right there in my trap. You can kind of barely see them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lengthen the entrance to my funnel. Hopefully that will help me out. I really wish that you guys could see this. Because right in there is just a school of little bluegill. I mean, right there is a good sized one. But it's very hard to see on the camera. The bluegill aren't actually what I'm after. I saw a bigger fish in here. I don't know if it was a trout or what. But I want them, and I want to eat them. But I will eat a bunch of bluegill if I need to. Some of them are, they're such pretty fish. They're like my favorite fish to catch on a pole. Anyways, here's what I've done with my funnel entrance here. The rocks started want to want to uh, cave in, so I had to put that support there, but I kind of made it a little bit more complicated, and I'm hoping that that makes it more difficult for them to escape through. See, there's a few more of those bluegill. I hope you guys can see that. Anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to that ridge right there with my cane pole and try and uh, fish for them using these worms and some more crawdads that I'm about to catch. So hopefully between these two fishing methods I'll get something. Look at this cool rock that I found. I think I'm going to give it to my dad. He collects fossils. I don't necessarily think that this is a fossil because I can't tell what it would be. Maybe a fern or something? But it does look cool. So, uh, I'll take it home with me. Well, the bluegill have not come back into my trap, but I want to show you something interesting. Here is the crawdads. Lots of fish swimming around them. They love it. And there is Mr. Deadfish. No activity whatsoever. So, if you're thinking about baiting a trap and you have the option between the two, the crawdads could definitely be the way to go. Now, I have a few worms. Those are the hooks that I set yesterday. Little tiny fish were kind enough to clean them off for me and leave them, so I just 
uh, pulled them off and packed up the line. And then I've got these guys. So now I'm going to go sit up and try and do some fishing. I might try and make a new cane pole first though because that other one is just too overbuilt for anything that I'm going to be doing here. So I kept screwing with my little trap here. I was pushing down on a stone over there and the stone just shattered and cut up my finger a little bit and basically I just went headlong into the depths there. So I'm going to doctor this up just a little bit while well, I already have. I might leave it as it is, but uh, I think that I've probably spoiled this fishing pool um, just with use, at least this hole. But that big fish, I did see him go right over to that hole yesterday. So... I'm going to leave this little area alone and uh, move my butt over that way, which I've been kind of avoiding doing, but it's time. So hopefully that works for me. Guys, so I mentioned that the uh, cane pole deal just wasn't going to work. And so I started looking around for a better stick, didn't really find what I was looking for, so I've made this. See, I want the ability to cast. So I just took this right off the top of my cane pole, and I'll put my bait on there and a weight on there. I'll put my thumb right here, and then I'll cast. And then I will reel using my hand. Uh, I think that this is going to work a lot better for what I'm doing here. It took me a long time to get my little fishing device running properly. And it took me a long time to figure out exactly what I needed to catch the little bluegill. But once I got it all figured out, I was able to pull them in. You can see here that while I'm in the process of fishing, I'm also modifying my little fishing setup at the same time. And I was able to get a pretty decent little unit uh, by doing this, and it worked really well for me. As much as I'd like to, I'm not going to be able to film all of my fishing because I could bring 10 memory cards and not have enough memory for it. But I think at the heart of my problem here, getting all of these bites and losing all of this bait, is that I've been using this hook, this guy right here, and I think that it's too big. They're just grabbing the bait and running with it. So what I've got going on now is this little hook. And hopefully I'm going to have more success with that. Because if I don't, then I'm just going to continue to be very, very hungry. Hike home hungry and start driving hungry and stinky and everything else. And I'd really rather have something in my belly before I do that. So, uh... Hopefully I get something here. I know that he doesn't win me any awards, but uh, I finally got him one. I could uh, use this guy as bait, but uh, I think I'll just go put him in my trap over there and let him sit, and then if, if nothing happens, nothing happens. So That big guy's interested, though. He keeps coming over. He keeps looking at my bait. I think I'm going to get him. I just got to keep working at it. So since I put the smaller hooks on and you saw me catch the last fish or have the last fish, I've caught two more. Um, I think what I'm going to do if I keep catching these little guys is I think I'll cut their heads off, take their guts out, and boil them and eat them because I'm so dang hungry. Uh, but I really want that big fish really, really bad. But Jimbo's got to eat too. So, I think I'm on to something here. Um, the last two times I caught fish, I was on the other side over by my trap over there. Uh, the problem is, um, I put the last two fish that I got in there 
and they both instantly escaped. And so that fish trap might work for a bigger fish maybe, but I think that's kind of a lost cause. So uh, I'm just gonna keep fishing. He's number four. Like I said, I'm gonna keep him. Not a whole lot to him. Absolutely beautiful fish though. But uh, if I get a few of these guys, like I said, I'll boil them and I'll pull the meat right off them. So hopefully I don't have to. Hopefully I get that big guy and hopefully I can keep these guys alive and put them all back. See the big guy lurking in the back there? For hours. I've been going for him. He's bit, I think, four or five times now. And the hook hasn't set. And I'm very, very hungry. I don't want to say starving in respect to people who are starving, but uh, I am awfully hungry. Check this guy out. I don't actually want to touch him in case he might be toxic or something, although it doesn't seem likely. But, uh, I bet you the fish will like them. Holy cow. I just hit the worm jackpot. So, now hopefully I'll get to eat. This sad little guy, I guess, is keeper number three. You'll be careful when you're grabbing bluegill because if you don't do it right, their spines will get you. Come on. Jeez. So I cut through the back of the heads of the fish very quickly to make it as painless as possible for them. The easiest way for me to uh, get the guts out was actually to stick my blade down into the fish and cut down through all the bone and stuff there and then getting the guts out was really easy. Having the thick beefy knife actually made this process much easier than a small fillet knife because I was not filleting, I was cooking the whole fish. And so having something that wasn't thin and flimsy really made this process a lot easier. Using this fat wood was like cheating, but obviously sometimes cheating makes your life more difficult. What I should have done was the right thing. I should have gone out and collected more tinder and stuff like that instead of relying on an easy cheat that I had. But you gotta live and learn. Sometimes you try and do things the quick way and you end up doing things the hard way. Feral rod died. And so... 
it's gonna get interesting. See how much ferro rod we have left in here. Next we'll try my little backup here. I've been scraping some magnesium onto there or trying to. Honestly, that's a huge pain in the butt. But, uh, let's see, let's see what we can do. As I cheated or tried to cheat on this fire, it ended up being 10 times as much work as going through and doing things the right way would have been. But once I got it going, I was able to keep it going and, and make it work for me before I went home. As always, I wish that I hadn't rushed and I hadn't abused my gear. I brought what I needed to fix my gear, but if I had not brought what I needed to fix my gear, and if I had to have been out there longer, this would have been incredibly foolish. Goes the magnesium. That almost made me poop myself. Wow. I'd say that's hot.
Wait until I give you. Saw you, bud. I had a lot of fun out here. Uh, I was going to do gear reviews and stuff like that for you while I was out here, but I'm running out of memory, so time is short. Whenever you leave a campsite, double and triple check that you picked everything up. That's why OD green, or I'm sorry, that's why neon orange and neon pink are so important uh, to bushcrafters and survivalists more so than OD green and coyote tan. Um, so the reason that I go out and do these videos and purposefully don't bring things is so that I can learn uh, not only where I need to grow as a survivalist, which is always somewhere, but uh, also uh, learn about my gear and learn about what works and what doesn't work. So uh, I learned a lot this trip. Mostly I learned where I'm lacking, which will probably normally be the case. But... Uh, that's why I go out. The reason I videotape it is so that you guys who might want to find something to learn might be able to, if there's anything worthy of learning. But more importantly, uh, for guys who can't go out and do this anymore, so that uh, you can watch it and be entertained and enjoy. Anyways, please subscribe to my channel. And like I said, I'm going to do gear reviews and separate videos shortly. Have a great day. I look forward to talking to you in the comments section. Um, I think I'll get a Baconator. Just a sandwich? Just a sandwich. Alright, what else can I get for you? That'll be all. Alright, 667, place one down. Thank you very much.